Welcome to Uplift You. This moment's focus is on developing your own influence. Amy and I share our insights on this important topic. So fire B is a, a, a hot topic at the minute, um, and I'll hand over to Amy to go into more depth about what that is. We use FireOB as part of one of the tools that we have um, deployed as when we set up all of our mentoring um, programs. FireOB was designed by a guy called Will Schultz um, back in the nineteen what in the late nineteen fifties. He was he's a psychologist and went into um, the U.S. Navy and was asked to figure out how do teams work effectively together. And so he came up with three different areas. Um, and one of those areas is around influence. Like, and he, he essentially says that as human beings, we have three core interpersonal needs. So a little bit like how we need food and water and stuff like that. But we all have varying degrees of them. But interestingly, I think the reason why we've picked to, to use this like interpersonal um, behavioral psychometric tool is because it really helps you understand not only what you exhibit so what you show the world and how you behave but also what you um need or what you feel as well quite often we adapt our behavior to different circumstances and things like that so it's the closer you can get to your needs and your kind of behaviors the better it is and the more comfortable we are um as well so it's, i think it's a really powerful tool and it's a really powerful tool that helps us understand how to get the best out of situations that we're in as well. And it's really important that we do that when we're looking at kind of career development as well. Like we said, we've been using Faro B as part of our mentoring programs because we think it's a real like key tool and to help us understand um, not only kind of how we cro come across, but also kind of the behaviours and stuff that we need. Um, so essentially organizations throw lots and lots of different people together um people who have different values different personalities so it's all about how we can effectively work better together and i think one of the philosophies that i've always taken since we've been starting doing uplift her is that actually jobs are relationships and careers are networks and so if we the more that we can understand how we kind of come across the better that is like kind of, and the better that we can get, um, sorry, the the best we can get out of our career as well. Um, so interestingly, Schultz's um, daughter, when he was setting up kind of Farabee and all of his kind of research and the psychology research he was doing, as she turned around and said, look, daddy, people need people. And I think that stems right across like our lives and essentially how organizing organizations are set up as well. So Fro B identifies influence, um, but it also uses influence interchangeably with control as well, the terminology kind of around control. Um and it's a really interesting exercise to go through because actually it looks at how people not only how you come across, but the patterns like kind of of behavior, how you kind of manage conflict as well, and the better understanding of your your needs. So when we think about control and influence together, it's actually, he said it was deeply rooted in our own self-concept around competency. So how it relates to power and authority and decision-making. So when you're going through uh, the assessment of Faro B, there's lots of kind of questions that come up when it's it's around or related to how much we want to lead, like how much ambiguity are we comfortable with or enjoy, how much you rely on others and ask for help. And I think that's definitely a thing that um, I've struggled with, like kind of over time is certainly asking for help when you, you need it, but also like how much you promote your own ideas and opinions, um, as well as the approach like you take for like um, when you're looking at new tasks as well and how much clarity you want from, from others. Like I said, there's a difference between expressed and wanted. So expressed control or expressed influence, you would kind of see somebody that um, 
very much wanted to take responsibility maybe for um, a project or a team or the di direction that kind of um, people are going in, wanting them to, to kind of follow um, their ideas. And none of this is positive or negative. It's just um, behavioral traits that kind of um, come out. Um, and then on the low side, it would be actually seen as somebody that was far happier letting maybe other people kind of lead them um, and have structure and stuff um, given to them. And then wanted is about kind of how we feel. So actually, do you do you want like kind of more guidance? Do you want kind of um, more influence kind of put upon you so you have clarity like kind of in terms of what you do? So I think when we think about Faro B, the interesting bit is to the degree of which ambiguity kind of plays a point as well um, and how comfortable we are dealing with um, ambiguity. It's interesting though, because he also says like transformation happens from the inside out. So it's certainly interesting when you think about organizations and wanting to to kind of um, change or, or adapt. And I think you not only as human beings have behavioral traits but organizations can also have behavioral traits as well and then what's the difference between FIRO b and the other personality tests out there because i know myers briggs was quite popular back in the day with 16 personalities i, I know yeah. uh, we all did that at, at work at one point because <clears throat> it was a fun little thing to do so what's the difference between uh FIRO b and all of them I've looked at many a personality assessments in my time and I think they all have a place um, and they all have, there's there's different reasons potentially why you would use them. Um, I The reason why I like Frara B more than others is because actually it's contextual. So it's actually not saying your deep rooted personality, like kind of we're not trying to look at essentially the roots under the ground like kind of the from your self-concept and everything else that says oh look I'm an extrovert I'm an introvert like kind of therefore I can or can't do things or I should or shouldn't be comfortable with with doing certain things essentially we're looking at surface level behavior and really that's what we show the world so the better we can understand how we're coming across the better we can adapt to our situations and that's one of his main theories is that he says it's it is contextual so therefore our situations change our behaviors so the better we can understand that the more that we can do so it's less around deep-rooted personality and more around actually behaviors which ultimately it's the behaviors that make you successful or not maybe explain a little more about after taking the test receiving the results like what happens thereafter when you talk us through the steps? Yeah, so we have decided to use Fara B. So individuals will typically go through a succession of, of questions. They feel a little bit repetitive, um, but that's merely because the, the assessment itself is set up to understand frequency and selection. So essentially the questions over time get more intense and then the, the system itself is figuring out where to kind of, um, where to tap out. Um, but what we do with individuals is take them through a one-to-one -one kind of coaching session. So we actually help them understand their results. So you're not only just given the, the results themselves, but actually we go through all of the key areas with individuals, we help them understand how they have kind of potentially been perceived, like kind of, like I said, so those express behaviors versus like kind of what they need. And that's really the start of better understanding yourself, um, understanding, like we said, those those different behaviors that that you have, but also how other people might perceive them as well. And sometimes we just don't really get the opportunity to do that, um, but also if there is a difference. So we really kind of work through where there might be bits that might be limiting us, where we might be doing really well. And also that then helps us figure out with other people on mentoring programs, how we can match people together 
because ultimately if you are scoring low in a certain area again it could all be contextual so it could be the current situation that you're in at the moment um but ultimately we want to try and match you with somebody that's going to help you with the the areas that you've identified that you want to, to kind of improve on or change or like kind of adapt like you said none of it is necessarily positive or negative so that's why it kind of plays really a crucial role and then that allows us to put two people together within one organization that ultimately sets quite a like a positive learning framework because actually these two individuals can learn from each other not necessarily based on hierarchical like experience or anything else like that but actually like their their perceived notion of of how they portray themselves and how they kind of come across and then we work through them together but also then we send them material on an ongoing basis so you can and it increases with complexity over time so actually you can address some of the things that actually are going to help you develop your career so there's opportunities to retake the test later on is, is what you're saying so that way you can keep kind of updated on uh, where you're headed and your goals and achievements. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unlikely that it would change dramatically. Like he is saying it does change, um, but it's unlikely to change significantly unless you were kind of taking it at a time maybe where you were going through a really difficult period in your in your life. Maybe it's like you've experienced some trauma or something like that. Um, and therefore those, the way that you've taken the tests is, is changed. So you would, you would definitely see changes over time because that's the purpose of it, but you're unlikely to see them change significantly. So within a few weeks, you wouldn't see a change, but over a period of months, maybe years yeah. is when you would see that trajectory change. And it depends on what areas you decide you want to, to work on as well. I think that's why it becomes quite a key tool for us in our mentoring programs, because actually not only does it give you the understanding of yourself, but it gives you an opportunity to, to figure out what is it that might be limiting you or areas that maybe you're not so comfortable with um and that you do want are, are those patterns of behavior that you have serving you best like kind of and is there somebody else within your organization that can help you with those so that actually you can learn and you can kind of test yourself with the support of somebody because it is really important for everybody to have support um but can you test and learn from somebody else like kind of um that's a pretty much as the so it's in a safe environment as well. I think that's also really important. We're particularly in roles, we have the need to complete tasks and be perceived in a certain way. And that is also down to influence. And sometimes it's it can be really daunting for people to feel like they've got a space to test or even talk about some of these things. So that's the whole point. And, and really what it also does is it adds value, not just from... The people that are on the program but also from the company itself like do we want to be a learning organization um like kind of how it will accidentally like it spread the impact like kind of further so does the organization if you if you go back to to influence and how influence shows up in organizational culture like do we have centralized power is there a win-lose competition between individual and, and departments? Is cons is there consistency and clear policy? How do you look at decisiveness and like accountability? Or actually on the other side, are we more around wanting free exchange of opinions, overlapping responsibilities, like kind of general direction um, provided, but along with like kind of autonomy? Um, and so I think what we do is not only work with the individuals, but also work with the company so that the individuals will have an impact on those that are around them, because the better you understand yourself, the more kind of influence you can have on others. But also we help the leadership team understand like how the, the organizational behaviors, you can see traits like kind of that come out 
through the assessment, but also through the work that we will do with individuals um, to understand what are these benefiting you or are they limiting you? And I think that's what you would always ask individuals as well as companies. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for next week's Uplift You podcast. Make sure to hit that subscribe button.